Hi, I'm talking to Jason Mogus. He's right now coming to us from the UN Climate Summit in Copenhagen. Actually, he's been put in charge of this Fresh Air Center, which is where a lot of bloggers are coming together from around the world. Thanks so much for talking to us today. Mm -hmm. So tell us Great. what the Fresh Air Center is, how you got involved. Yeah, so the Fresh Air Center, so we're part of a, a campaign called the Tick, Tick, Tick campaign. And it's a coalition of, we're now 250 organizations around the world. Um, started off with a lot of big brands you'd know, WWF International and Greenpeace and Oxfam. Uh, um, but we also expanded to include the Red Cross and the World Council of Churches, and we have labor organizations involved. And so it's, it's really one of the most diverse and broad coalitions that's ever come together. And it's all around this conference, really. It's all around trying to get a, a fair, ambitious, and binding climate deal out of Copenhagen. So we knew, I've been running the digital stuff for all year and, and working with all of our partners that have really amazing campaigns. And, and this space is actually for two people. Um, we've got global bloggers here from probably 50 different countries. You know, I've seen bloggers come through. I, I sign a lot of the checks for subsidies we've written. So from, you know, Togo and Ghana and uh, Barbados and where else was I sending them today? Uh, I'm a little bit tired. It's been two weeks of 20-hour days here. But um, so we have all these global bloggers, a lot of well-known U.S. bloggers from media like Grist and Treehugger and Huffington Post and Mother Jones and The Nation and, and um, so, but we also wanted to bring them in with the digital campaigners that work at our at our nonprofits. So uh, we've got you know digital campaigners that are blogging or running online campaigns for Greenpeace, and and a, a lot of those organizations are also based here. So it's kind of a mixing space. So why um, is this important? Why is it important to have a, a space to bring people together and I guess bring people information live from the ground? Well, it became a lot more important yesterday when they shut the NGOs out of the conference. So earlier last week, when we all had accreditation. Uh, it was easy. We, we could be inside the Bella Center where the action was. Uh, we couldn't be in the press room unless, you know, the UN has a more open than it was a year ago, but not a very kind of progressive blogger um, relations policy. And we've been helping them kind of develop that a little bit more, kind of open up what they think is of as a, as a media source. But we needed to provide a space um, for those bloggers to be able to get content. So we're piping all kinds of live content in from the Bella Center every day. Uh, we have evening events uh, every night with, uh, you know, live, like, political analysis and, and really great updates. We, last night we had a media panel with George Monbiot and Naomi Klein and Ann, Ann Rev Revkin from New York Times. So, you know, we've been providing this analysis to people. But I guess, um, ultimately, we also, you know, the reason why we called it Fresh Air Center is because, you know, let's face it, things aren't very uh, clear up there. I've, I've been watching some of the world leaders get up there on TV today, and, you know, you'd think they're all environmentalists, the way they talk. They're, oh, this is the biggest issue of our times, and we must address it, and... Well, they certainly aren't addressing it with a lot of the positions that they're putting forward. So, so this is a place where people can kind of uh, chill out at the end of the day, file their stories, get educated, connect and collaborate with others, share content, share stories. That's, that's ultimately what, what I wanted to do it. So what reactions are you seeing happen, you know, in terms of how people are reacting to the news, you know, and officials coming out internationally talking about the environment and what they're looking to do? Uh, are people seeing pr progression? Do we see that there's going to be some sort of positive result with this this year? You know, it's been tricky. There was sort of a week there where not much happened, um, and it was really hard to tell what was going on, and there were, the news was coming in a trickle, and, you know, there's always lots of energy, but it was hard to know, you know, who's saying something. Um, really got pretty dicey with the NGOs being, you know, huge clampdown going from 15,000 to 5,000 to now 1,000 today. So these are all people that bought plane tickets that are have hotels here that were told they could participate in the conference and are now on the outside, including a lot of our own staff, so it's pretty important to know what we're doing. Um, so things got pretty dodgy yesterday. It looked like we were moving towards collapse, and then all of a sudden, you know, Hillary makes her announcement today of $100 billion. Um, uh, you know, Obama's coming, and you know, all these heads of state are here. Uh, we had actually the top climate uh, guy for the UN, Janos Pastor, was briefing us tonight uh, for our evening um, happy hour. Uh, uh, and... Uh, you know, he, and, and Kumi and I do our board chair last night, everyone's saying maintain hope, you know, um, that there's still a possibility for a breakthrough. We have 24 hours to get one. Well, what, what, are, what is the hope? What are people hoping to get out of this? There's a big rift that's opened up between the developed world and the developing world, ultimately. Um, and there's also a rift between countries like America and Canada and Australia that tend to have a, a more of a right-wing population that is, that is, you know, the, then, then, and the rest of the world, ultimately. And then when I mean right-wing, I don't mean... To say necessarily political, it's more there are huge constituencies in those countries that don't believe climate change is even real. And so 
the rest of the world, particularly the global south, is dealing with the impacts every day, is saying, actually, it's real. Look at my cities. Look at my streets. You could say that in America, too, if you want to look at, you know, heat waves in Chicago and Katrina and all these things happening. But so there's a real, there's a couple of major rifts that are basically opening up. A number of, of very powerful interests are also here working uh, just as hard as the NGOs are and with a lot more resources than we have uh, to obviously influence the talks in a way that works for them. And, and, you know, we're trying to influence them in a way that we think is aligned with the science and with the needs of kind of adaptation and, and reality that a lot of people are experiencing in the global south. So it's very tricky. Here. This is this is not a conference about the earth. It's not a conference about, you know, the environment. This is a conference about how we are as humanity, how we how we live together, uh, how we deal with problems we may have caused inadvertently or not, uh, how we how we deal with our, you know, our lifestyles and, and the kind of uh, just the, you know, the massive, any of the charts you look at, it's just carbon is just going like this. And the science is saying it's got to go like this. And in fact, you know, really it's got to go like this. And it's a hockey stick and, and everything. So it's, it's pretty intense here. There's a lot of, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of hope. There's been a, there's a huge youth contingent here. You'd be amazed to see how many bright, shiny youth there are from all over the world. Thousands and thousands and thousands. It's beautiful. And they're actually contributing in a sub significant way to the to civil society they're not off on the side they're not kind of uh you know unaffiliated and aligned they're they're in the game and uh you know the ngos are really organized uh, a lot of a lot of leaders want to make a deal um but there's these interests and you know ultimately they are um large corporate interests and energy companies it goes back years this isn't something you can cure overnight you know, we're we're very comfortable with the ways that we that our economy works and this is going to you know it's it's a real would have to cause a real shift to how we look at a lot of the things. So speaking of carbon emissions, what do you say to those critics that say, you know, all these people coming in from around the world basically flying and then, you know, just putting together that tent and the heat that you're basically going against what you're trying to, you know, support? Well, the way I look at it is I figure the entire kind of NGO movement contributes, what, maybe 0.001% of all global travel. So I think it's kind of a it's a complete red herring to think like environmentalists shouldn't travel uh, when everybody is traveling all the time to do everything. You know, how about talk about the three holidays we take a year if we're really going to take a look at that. You know, these are huge events. If we weren't here, then our voices don't get hurt. So, uh, you know, we can we can connect virtually like you and I are doing. But the fact is, if you look in here tonight, you know, we had Bill McKibbin in the space tonight and, and uh, you know, the chief um, communications officer for the UN was here tonight. You know, like I said, the top climate guy for the UN. Connections happen in the water, you know, the water coolers and the walkways at the bar, and and people hear stories that they wouldn't have heard if you're not there. So, you know, if 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 people um, trying to push for a, a po you know a stronger deal aren't here, then how would we ever get one? I'd love to hear someone say all the corporate lobbyists shouldn't be flying around because they should just stay at home and lobby remotely. You know, send big piles of cash around the world to wire it. You know, you got to be where the game is if you want to contribute to it. Well, best of luck with that game there in Copenhagen. Where should people go to get more information? Well, I mean, there's tons of great content out there. I mean, all of the major media is covering this conference, obviously. Uh, a lot of the bloggers that are here, you know, Grist has a huge section on this. Um, Tree Hugger is running, you know, tons of stories. Um, we're running a site called live.tick.tick.org. So our campaign, the Tick, Tick, Tick campaign, uh, which means, you know, time is running out. It also means that there's a lot of opportunities if we make changes. Uh, we're aggregating the content of all these bloggers in here, so about 350 bloggers and, and campaigners. So you can check it out there. We've got a couple of streaming partners, despite the fact that a lot of them have had their uh, badges, you know, snipped. Um, we've still got some people on the inside that are live streaming. Uh, we're bringing a lot of the, you know, leaders of the Global South talking about what's going on. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I think the problem here is not that there's not enough content. It's more how do you sift through it all and get to the real stories. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jason, for talking to us today. Okay, good. Well, thanks for uh, piping into the Fresh Air Center, and we hope you guys, uh, you know, support what's going on in here because it's a, it's a big deal. And, you know, just the last thing I'll leave you with is what everyone who gets up there keeps saying is whether we get a good deal or a medium deal or a framework for a deal or a collapse, all of those are reasonable scenarios. Uh, what's actually important is that this movement has come together, and, and this is not an issue that's going to be solved just because some politicians sign a piece of paper. This is an issue that we're going to be dealing with our entire lives and for generations. So, you know, this movement is growing, and, and the more people know about it, you know, we just have to get ready for not just dealing with the issue, but adapt, adapting to the issue. So we'll be talking about this for a long time. Yes, and I'm sure I'll talk to you again soon about it. <laughs> more stuff. Thank you. Okay.